Hello. It's the end of the first week of Inktober. How did we get here? Um, so just to let you know, I messed up the first go-through of this drawing. <laughs> oh, I was so frustrated. I went to put a line for um, Nolan, the, the guy here, Nolan's nose, and a big drop of ink fell down onto the page and gave him a clown nose because I put too much ink on my pen. I'm like kicking myself. But yeah. So yeah, I guess like an update about how I'm taking Inktober. It is simultaneously very fun and very frustrating. <laughs> I've had several like things like this happen where like, well, the first one was I tried to get ahead and I did a recording like the night before um, I had to do uh, the video for for yesterday. So I did it on like um, Thursday instead of doing it on Friday. Wait, no, Friday instead of Saturday. Sorry. But I did, a, I tried to do a recording early to save myself some time and the footage didn't record and I wanted to throw myself out the window. I was so annoyed. I don't know what happened. I don't know if I didn't hit the record button or if like something went wrong or I clicked the button too many times. I don't know what happened, but I lost the footage. And so I had to redo the, the, uh, drawing of Slough and Padilla. <laughs> Um, from Bones' video yesterday. And then today I had to redo it again. I had to redo this one because I messed up with the little ink blot. So yeah, I'm really tired of redoing sketches. Ah, all my prep goes out the window. Do you know how I did a video on digital versus traditional? I like digital a lot, though I probably wouldn't like it as much if I was constantly having problems with like, I don't know, Photoshop crashing. Like, I know that used to happen to me a lot. I, I, it hasn't happened to me in recent years. This is basically your ink freaking out is like Photoshop crashing. It's the worst. <laughs> but I think other than that, other than those frustrations, things have been very good with Inktober. I've gotten a lot more confident in my lines. I've learned quite a bit about using the dip pen. Um, at the beginning, I was using way too much ink. I used too much today. <laughs> because of the little the little nose drip incident. But I'm getting there. I'm still learning, I guess. So I've noticed for my ink is that um, the ink that I have is a little bit tacky. I think it's because it's old. Um, but I find adding a little bit of water has been helping me with uh, getting smoother lines. So what I do is I will dip my pen in the ink and then dip it into a little bit of water just to get the ink to like... I guess like get a little bit more watery so that it's easier to get on the page and my lines have been feeling a lot better for it. I've also been cutting my my black fills with water. Um, I find I've been getting a little bit too washy here and there where I kind of miss the really stark uh, darkness of the ink. Um, I think my favorite so far has been the uh, the painting of Calamity. Painting. The drawing of Calamity. The ink the ink, ink, ink of Calamity, because um, I, I really liked the dark tones I got. I also liked the wash that I was able to do. So yeah, I don't know what I did right, so hopefully I'll figure it out before the end of this challenge. <laughs> Ooh, -ooh. Art can be so frustrating. I'm sure if you if you're doing art, you you know what I mean. There's always like crazy mistakes that will happen, like the ink falling on the page or Photoshop crashing. But like it can also be frustrating when you don't know how to draw something, or sometimes you just have days where like you draw something a million times and it just won't work. Like those days are the bane of my existence. Um, it used to bother me, especially when I was on like tight deadlines where you're like, it was really just a symptom of like me not studying and honestly not having like the skill to study properly. Like when I was very early into comics and um, I was really pushing myself to get like 7 million pages done every day. So I'd get so frustrated when I couldn't draw something right because it slowed down my progress. So I'd be like, I, I have to get this page out for tomorrow, otherwise I am garbage, which is really harmful and I shouldn't treat myself that way, especially over something like a, a comic deadline that's like self-imposed. Yeah, and it was just because it would hinder my progress. Um, I'd feel really bad about it. I found when I started to like really let myself be more chill about this stuff, it really helps with like my mood and my, my frustration. Because when I can give myself like, well, this page isn't working out, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. Or like, I'll take another crack at this like at another time. Let's move on to something else. I started feeling a, well, a lot better. Um, I stopped hating myself <laughs> about my art and uh, creating comic pages got a lot more fun. <laughs> um, 
Uh, and it also helped when I started to study more um, and I started to recognize when I was struggling instead of trying to force like beautiful artwork I decided to just let it go I guess. I kind of I've always had the mindset of like if it doesn't work out you can always redo it later. I guess not always because I had trouble really accepting that uh, early on. But since adopting that outlook it has made me a lot more calm about making stuff. Because I remember early on I felt like every time I drew something good it was like a fluke. I didn't know how I did it. I just knew that like, oh, this piece turned out really nice. And I think just with like gaining knowledge about art and about um, everything having to do with art, like composition, technique, um, that's really helped me see when something is good. I'm able to compare it to, say I can take one of my pictures and compare it to reality or something I'm trying to emulate and I can go, okay, this looks good. Um, this follows good composition rules and good anatomy. I like it. It's good. Uh, whereas before, I didn't know all that stuff, so I couldn't really tell when something was good or bad um, or how I got there. But yeah, I've found this challenge is a little more frustrating. Again, because I have tight deadlines every day where it's like, I need to put out an Inktober video every day and if I mess up, I have to redo my video and that takes a lot of time. I forgot how hard it is to do daily videos. Oh my gosh, it takes so much out of you. I don't even have to do like the audio every day because Bones is sharing. So like, how did I do this for the hundred days? I mean, I guess it helped that I was doing it digitally and my recording stuff didn't not work. <laughs> um, so yeah, oh, it's been it's been a little frustrating, guys. I'll be real with you. Still fun. It is. I think it's just like disappointing that I did all this prep work before October started. Like I got all my sketches done, and I was really happy with all my sketches. And then it's like, nope, you gotta redo it. Ugh. And don't get me wrong, I do like the things I've redone, but I'm sad that I didn't get to do the original version. I guess because like I can still redo it and have it look good, but I liked my first version. <laughs> I think with digital, it's a lot easier to like, are all my videos going to be comparing traditional and digital? I don't know. I'm learning traditional, so I can only really compare it to digital. But man, in digital, it's a lot easier to like recreate something. You can always take it and like, like, um, onion skin it and put like your previous draft underneath your new draft. So it's very easy to like recreate things that you like and improve upon them. But like with traditional, at least the way I'm doing it in a sketchbook with like blue lines, it's like I can't just overlay it and redo it. <laughs> I have to refigure it out from scratch. So yeah, a little frustrating. Interesting. I'm really hoping that tomorrow my image doesn't give out. I'm gonna be really mad. Inktober, be good to me please. <laughs> So there's, there's my update on the challenge, end of week one. Now on to the characters that I am drawing. So this is Nolan and Isla. They are from a an RP with bones, of course. Isla is my character. Uh, she's the lovely lady in the front. And uh, Nolan is Bones' character. Um, the whole premise of this RP was that it is a... Uh, it's like a... It was another one of our, like, modern settings with monsters. But the main, like, monster spirit entity is Nolan, and he's a genie that is trapped in a hard drive. <laughs> um, it was mixing a lot of, like, uh, monsters and creatures with technology. Like, they were kind of channeled through tech. It was as if, like, spirits were, like, in the air, and you'd have to, you had, you had to use technology to make them real, I guess. Um, so Nolan, he is... He's originally a human, he's from the 90s, and one of his friends created this technology to create a genie and turn Nolan into one. Um, so Nolan is now trapped in like an old 90s hard drive, he can grant three wishes to whoever owns the, the hard drive, and if someone takes it, uh, then the previous owner uh, loses the remainder of their wishes if they haven't spent them already. So Isla here, um, she's in university. And she is hanging out in a computer lab. She's a programmer. She, so she finds this, uh, or she's studying to be a programmer, I should say. Um, and she's hanging out in a computer lab and she finds this hard drive and discovers Nolan. And he's like, I'm a genie. I've been asleep for like two decades. Um, and she's like, hawa? <laughs> Excuse me? So she at first is very like, I don't know what to wish, wish for. What it, What's like the scope of the wishes? She's very cautious and like 
she really wants to, like, think it out before she commits to anything, and he keeps, like, trying to get her to make her wishes really quickly because he wants to go back to sleep in the hard drive, um, because when he's not, like, uh, bound to someone, he, he just sleeps. And he's like, I want to go back to bed, I don't like being awake, and she's like, um, why? And he's like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, he's basically said that his friends abandoned him and turned him into a genie, and he, he wants to just sleep through the pain. As is later found out. Um, so meanwhile, Isla is, um, at first we thought the ship was going to be Isla and Nolan. Um, we thought they were going to, like, smooch and stuff, and eventually she'd, like, set him free or something. But because RPs are very, like, improv um, and they kind of figure themselves out, um, Isla ended up with a different guy. Uh, just because, like, the chemistry between her and Nolan wasn't really working. She was a little too, like, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but they just didn't mesh. She wasn't super interested in his problems. Uh, we've, we've made other characters that got more invested in things. But Isla ended up with Tom? Tim? Can't remember his name exactly. Uh, but they went to a class together. They, they discovered there was a class about, like, paranormal study um, that was run by, like, this really weird, nervous professor lady. So she takes that course because of Nolan. She's like, what the heck is going on? Have they ever heard of, like, genies and hard drives? Um, and I think she recognized the name of the professor, um, because she was one of the people who was friends with Nolan when he got trapped as a genie in the hard drive. Um, so she goes to, so Isla goes to investigate this professor and take the class because she's curious about, like, because paranormal stuff is real, apparently. Um, and so she meets, um, a few characters in that class. It's like a five-person class. Um, and she meets, uh, Tim or Tom or whatever his name is, and they end up dating and smooching and stuff, and he's really cute. He's, like, I think he's, like, trying to become a doctor or a lawyer, uh, to make his, like, parents happy or something. He was really cute. He was really, like, awkward and nerdy. Like, he wasn't the usual, like, suave doctor type. But yeah, so they were cute nerds together. And uh, her other friends, there was a guy called Owen. He was really cute. He was this really, like, sweet, um, smart, soft-spoken guy who, um, it was, like, his first time away from, like, really strict parents. So he'd, like, party hard but be, like, super sweet and studying all the time. And I think he had psychic powers. I can't remember exactly what they were. Oh, I know what it was. He could read auras. That's why he was so kind of weird. <laughs> He could read auras, so he could always see that, like, Isla and Tom had, like, a crush on each other. He was like, oh, their aura's all pink. Like, they're, they're in love. <laughs> and so he'd, like, offhandedly say it, and they'd all get all blushy and like, what? No. And there was another girl. I can't remember her name. I think it might have been, like, Kim or something. Oh, shoot. No, it was Belle. Bella. Why Kim? Oh, I don't know. She was, she was a very, uh, sassy, kind of deadpan type type gal. She was very no-nonsense and kind of, like, dry sense of humor. Um, and eventually, her and Nolan started kind of liking each other, um, because she was like, hey, it's unfair that Nolan is getting trapped in this little, what do you call it? <laughs> He's trapped in, in this lamp, or, sorry, hard drive. How about I take him out and hang out with him? And I was like, okay. Uh, so, uh, Bella and Nolan started hanging out. They were pretty cute good ship. Um, she took him to buy clothes because he's just wearing like old 90s clothes. Um, and she's like, do you want cool things in your life? And he's like, no, I hate my life. And she's like, okay, buddy, let's go. <laughs> and then, yeah. So before we kind of like dropped the RP, it's one we haven't touched in a while. I think Owen got taken over by a spirit. It was like some kind of evil spirit that got summoned. So because he's so like susceptible to like paranormal stuff, because he can read auras and he's psychic, etc. Um, so he got taken over by a spirit. Don't remember what happened after that, if we got any farther than that. Meanwhile, there's another plot going on with the professor lady who runs the paranormal class. Um, so like I said, she was Nolan's friend when he was in university and she was in university. Um, and she worked with two other professors, one of which trapped Nolan, the other which, uh, the other of which, um, did some bad stuff. I'm not going to go too much into detail about these guys because I realize I drew them for a later date, so you'll get to know more about the, the professor team. Um, but they're really cute. Uh, they were another story going on in that RP, um, so I guess I will leave them till next time. Um, but they're really cute and silly. So yeah, that was the, the paranormal genie college kids. Yeah, they were really cute. 
I kind of miss this RP. Maybe we'll start it up again. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, tell me what you think about cute genies in hard drives. I thought it was cute. Yeah, I guess that's all I have. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to check out our call for submissions for our anthology about LGBT werewolves. It is called Moonlight. There's a link to it in the description down below. If you have a comic or a story you'd like to pitch to us, go check out the submission guidelines. If you have any questions or comments about Inktober or this video or anything, make sure to comment down below. And if you want to see more cool stuff about web comics and me getting frustrated about Inktober, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!